Hi everybody! Welcome to Katie Moonchild's world. We reach Saturday solutions. We come together here to look for a solution to all the stuff that's going on around us. Maybe just our own little personal things. Anyway, I'm happy to be here and um, let's get this reading started. I'll switch cameras and we'll get going here. Hi everybody. Okay, we're ready to start now. <laughs> I tell ya. As you can tell, we have several different cards here. They're from several different decks. We start out with the cross. It points out the four directions. You have north, south, east and west. In the center here, we have a road map. How do we maneuver through these directions? Here, in this branch, it's like a tree. Okay, we're going to go with the tree of life idea today. In this branch, we have a spirit message. In this branch, we have a daily affirmation to say this week to help bring you more keep you on track and bring you more in alignment with what you are wanting to manifest and over here finally we have our final message it's from the creatures of the lower realm our beautiful wonderful animal companions let's see what we all feel have to say Okay. Here is uh, our current situation. It's also the West, but you know what happens in the West, the sun sets. So that's usually the end of the day. So this is our current situation and our past. What do we need? Yes, this is where we currently sit. What a gorgeous, interesting card. We're trying so hard to shine our light, you guys. Are you paying attention to who you're giving your energy away to? Wow. Look at her. She's holding up that globe with her light. You see that up there in the corner in her hands? She's creating it, the light. She's protecting her creation with that light. And it's coming in cycles and phases. That's what these cards, or these images mean right here. I'm going to put it down here while I talk to you about it a little bit. This card. Hmm. I'm hearing a lot in it. There's a lot about our fears in that too. This card is a five card. Which five is about conflict, it's about change, and it's about instability. Like I said, our fears are in that. I think we're uh we have so many messages, subliminal and right in your face, all over the place. Be afraid of this, this could happen. If this happens, this will happen. If, 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 don't fall down the if trap. Because the bottom of the if trap is anxiety and fear. You play that if game Play it out. Go ahead. Ask yourself, because that's where the answers are. You're giving away so much of yourself that it's getting hard to see and feel the energies around you. Slow down. It has to come in cycles. And yes, you are illuminating and protecting your creation. 
and it takes everything you've got. But because of that, you need to practice self-care. So there's one more card that I'm going to need to pull with this. With this deck to finish out our conversation. And that's from the Sacred Self-Care of Oracle. Taking care of yourself is a massive solution to every problem behind yourself. And by the way, I forgot to say that this is for entertainment purposes only. We're here to have a good time and uh, just some hopes. Okay. None of this is to be taken to the bank as something you need to do. Okay? Just understand that if you choose to follow the, this interpretation of these cards, uh, you might be surprised at the results of what you have accomplished. And also with this reading, please, what do you see in the card? It's speaking to you. If you're watching this, sorry, I had a freeloader in the picture there. Uh, you're watching this. To set you free. To set you free from this never ending, seemingly never ending anyway, condition of worry and doubt. Gotta stop. Gotta stop. Gotta stop it. Okay? Where are you giving your energy to? Who are you giving your energy to? And how much of it are you giving away? And how much of it do you need to keep store in your house, in your you, to recharge? You know, every night when you go to sleep, that's what you're doing, of course. Your body is recharging, but all of you is recharging. Now your spirit might be doing a lot of work while you're sleeping. As a matter of fact, it usually is. A lot of the time when you wake up tired, that's why. Honor it. Honor that dream. Okay? Let's take a look in the self-care oracle. Because in here, it's going to tell us <clears throat> how to take care of ourselves. Don't, don't. How to not sacrifice ourselves to the point where we have uh, sorry I'm slow but it's I can shuffle kind of sorta these cards I can't anyway because they're not heavy <laughs> uh, so care is how we get through all of this How do we help store and recharge this energy that we're giving away so freely? Yes. By doing energy work. Meditate. <clears throat> Spend as much time as you can in reflection meditation and spiritual rituals whatever brings you comfort that way but spend more time in a sacred space um, what's quiet where you can hear where you can focus on not stopping your thoughts but releasing your That's our clarity card on that. <clears throat> so if you want to not give away so much of you all around so that there's no time for you, you have to do energy work. And to do energy work, you have to pick and set aside regular time to do your energy work. Even if that's when you just first wake up in the morning and everyone else is asleep, I find that to be my favorite time because it's 
quiet and there's less distractions. It's easier to get into a meditation or prayer. It is also clearer at that time of day for messages to get through the veil. Okay? So how do we see what we want for our hopes and dreams? What are the goals and hopes and dreams for this? Ooh, yes. We want to recognize that there are parts of us we no longer own. As we have grown and transformed, we have reached the end of the cycle. This cycle being one that is a rooting cycle. In the roots, as you let go of the disowned parts of you, you, know, you do your shadow work and you find the parts of you that came from someone else, for instance, uh, that really aren't a part of the core being who you are. As you're letting that go, you're feeding your roots. That is the disowned part of the disowned self that you let go of. Now there's also parts of your soul that you have traded and let go as you have especially as an adult as you have aged and grown in this life those bits and parts of your soul some of them may need to be retrieved and some of them definitely need to be given to the microbes they know how to break it down so that it can feed your roots. I find this card really interesting because it's like this tree has roots in the top of it and at the bottom of it. Like there's a double set of roots. Or does it go this way? You see there's a feather. But is that feather laying on the ground? You notice it's a pen card. It's the end of a cycle. And this also could be interpreted as though your old ways are being burned up. They've gone the way of the autumn leaves and have becoming a part of the soil and the roots underneath the snow. If you're feeling disconnected from spirit right now, it's okay. Okay, you're covered with snow. It's like you're covered with a, a blanket. I also, as I look at this card closer, I, it's a child's face. That's a baby's face in there. It's letting you know, it's reminding you that deep down inside your roots is where your rebirth every year comes from. Yes, every year you have the opportunity to start over. Yeah, we know that, New Year's Eve and New Year's Resolution. But Spirit doesn't have a calendar. They don't know a calendar. What's New Year's Eve? Is it cosmically? If it's cosmically, then it goes from solstice to solstice. Not from January to January to December. It depends on your beliefs, which way you want to go with that. Just understand that's your beliefs, that is not spirit, okay? So if you want to be that baby that gets to be reborn and start all over again every year, and have, gets to walk on, not walk away, but walk on from who they used to be. That sounds like a pretty good goal to me. That sounds like a pretty necessary goal because I do know as a gardener, if your soil has not got the microbes in it to break down the waste, like the dead bugs, 
the leaves, all of the little broken down pieces, plant parts and bugs and bits. You need microbes to break that down because if you do, that doesn't get broken down, it'll just rot and stink and turn stagnant. You need the appropriate living microbes to break that down to feed the roots of the plant. So understand that every time you go through something difficult, it seems like a crisis or a trauma. And it is. Many times it is. Understand that it's a part of letting go of you, a part of you that you no longer need. And it's just feeding your roots, making you stronger, and giving you another chance for rebirth. What comes with rebirth? A lot of energy, new energy, right? So how do we get from giving away too much of our energy to uh, understanding that we are feeding our roots by letting go of what we need to let go of that's from us, about us, in our own growth. As long as you do that, You'll have the energy over here. It's amazing. Because these microbes are feeding the roots and keeping this tree of life alive. You have the energy. That tree of life is you. It'll give you the energy to keep holding up your creation and protecting it. And giving away your energy. Now as I move the globe, with the Keep a mind peace on earth. The map on how to get from where we're giving them up way too much to understanding that we only should be giving away the parts of us that we don't want anymore. This is a nine card. This card is to tell us, telling you us to recognize, even though we are very sad, we need to recognize how much we've attained. How close are we to complete fulfillment in our life? What have we brought to fruition ourselves? Because this is the card just before the end of the cycle. It's a nine card. And this fairy or angel, this, we'll call her a light being. It's like her light's dim. I heard so much when I was looking at this card. I hope I can remember to tell all of it to you. Her sadness comes from disillusionment. Her whole life, she was taught something. She was taught how to have integrity and decency and honor and respect. And as she aged, she understood that not everyone has been taught the same things she has the way she was. And in that comes a disillusionment and an anger of being lied to because it has been a consorted effort. But as the clarity comes, we will hear it clearer once we mourn and let go of the bits and parts of us that just cannot work anymore. Whether it's addiction, whether it's a relationship, whatever it is in your life that you just are not feeling fulfilled in, the map card is 
is telling us to let it go. It's something that you've unconsciously disowned. And if it's something about yourself, letting go of it will only feed you. For some reason, humans seem to find it so difficult to let go. Even when they know it's painful hanging on. Even when it tears them in, up inside to hang on. <clears throat> so anyway, this angel's sad. She's sad because everything that she was familiar with and comfortable with changed and she doesn't know what to believe in anymore and now shortly in the months ahead she's going to have to pick a new leader and she's so disillusioned and so filled with fear she doesn't know who's telling her the truth and who's not and she doesn't know where to go to find the truth does that sound familiar what the self-care cards say. <laughs> <coughs> Contemplation. Reflection. Have a cup of tea. And think about it. Really think about it. If it's making you sad, feel those emotions. Understand. This disillusionment that you're feeling is very real. It's not your fault. And you're not alone in feeling it. <clears throat> Pardon me. Everyone else is feeling it alone with you. And I find it interesting that the drink tea card is the number three. The number three is about expression and growth in your group. Think about in the morning when you get up, begin with energy work, do some meditation, and after you meditate, have a cup of tea to process and let what came into you in meditation sink in. And then feel the emotions that come with it. Don't stuff them, don't hide them. If you're sad, cry. Just understand it when you're sitting with those emotions. Do not get too comfortable. Because you do have to move on. You don't want to get stuck in sadness? I don't know about you. I could get stuck in some happiness. But even that wouldn't mean the same. Understand, we live in a world of duality. You have to have the dark to see the light. You understand me? <clears throat> wow. Okay, Gaia. What do you have to tell us down here in the valley? What are we going to talk about these obstacles? Oh. Plants we have growing in the valley is Rue. Look at that lion. And the angels. You have Mars. I'm sorry. Oh, wow. No. I'm sorry. You have Venus. The sun. You picked the Infinity. Can't stop thinking. But look, the heart is upside down. Underneath that lion. This card is about protection. It's 
it's also a four card, which is about stability, foundation, and manifestation. Maybe that's why the heart's upside down. Maybe they represent our fears. You can't manifest when you're focused on your fears. Oh, you can manifest, but you manifest what you're the most afraid of. What are you putting your energy into? I'm going to read out of the book because I have not, uh, I haven't used this deck enough to really know. You wouldn't know what to do lately if I didn't read at least one of these out of the book. I want to know what this says. This is really important. This is about having a psychic shield, an auric protection, and angelic wisdom. It is the banish banisher of darkness and the restoration of vitality. Rue is known as the herb of grace or the blessed herb. In Spanish, it is known as Ruda, and in Greek, as Bruno, which means to set free. Ryu, uh, sorry, Ru is considered a powerful and protective plant with a long and detailed history. Historical use in both medicine and ceremonial rituals. Early physicians considered Ru a vital remedy against plagues, pestilence, and poison. During the Middle Ages, Rue was hung in doorways and windows, windows to ward off the evil eye, hexes, and malevolent spirits. Some of its primary uses in the Greek and Roman medicine was to stimulate menstrual flow, to improve eyesight, to alleviate nerves and relieve rheumatism. Priests were said to dip rue in holy water to bless people and their homes. Many would wear bunches of it around their necks to ward off evil spells and curses. And Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo were said to consume their fresh tops to improve eyesight and increase creativity when immersed in their art. Although Rue is considered to be native to the Mediterranean, it has been found in historical accounts among the Maya, the Aztec, and indigenous peoples of North America, who also practice the, the tradition of planting Rue by doorways to bring blessings and protect against the evil eye. Rue is said to be the herb of angels, granting us the ability to channel the angelic realms. It in it in <clears throat> it emanates and pouring in light, golden light like a lion it's powerful and protecting and pouring in light into any space that it inhabits silent and wide resilient like the wide array of solar herbs it grows generously and abundantly thriving all over all kinds of terrains demonstrating its strong life force and vitality. Rue has landed in your cards today to remind you to protect your aura from lurking obsessive spirits that might be consuming your energy. Don't allow parasitic energy to darken your field, which can create perpetual states of self-criticism, self-doubt, or self-hatred. Call upon Rue's power to shield your body with angelic forces and restore a radiance, vitality, and love in your atmosphere. 
I think I want to plant some maru by my door. I don't know about you guys. Wow. That's awesome. That's incredible. Thank you, Gaia. It's a pretty plant, too. It kind of reminds me of... Um... No, it's a house plant. I can't think of the name of it right at the moment. It's beautiful. The house plant doesn't get a yellow blossom, though, like that. Interesting. Very, very nice. Okay. Thank you, Gaia. Basically, that card's saying we need to connect to the angelic realms to know what's true in the coming months. If you're afraid of maybe following something that isn't the truth because of what's happened in the past. What's happened in the past has happened to us all. All of us. Okay? Don't be afraid of disillusionment and finding out that a way, your, a way of thinking may need to be rearranged. It's okay. That's why we're here. You know, we're here to learn. We're not here to be perfect. Because first of all, perfection is impossible. Except that maybe in math. <laughs> anyway. So what I'm hearing here is definitely do the things you need to do to focus on your spirit this next week. It's going to be a really interesting week. Focus on spirit and you'll be fine. Don't let your ego play games with you. That's the heart that's upside down. see what we've got up here in the mountain. Is there a major obstacle here? Mmm, I love that card. It's the wolf spirit. It's all about family, your pack, your tribe. Is that an obstacle? For some of us, yes. And to some of us, we're creating a new pack and a new tribe. And this is the time of bonding with the family as you're in your den, keeping warm together. Your sense will bond, and that is when you become a family. To move forward, whatever your sense of family is, protect it. Because this card is also saying, you know, it's the wolf spirit, and you're the leader. You're the alpha. Look to the wolf spirit. The wolf is stealthy. The wolf is strong. And the wolf understands that it is not capable of surviving very long without the rest of the pack to back it up. Or rescue it with whatever. This is the weakness that we are discovering, I think, in our country. I think in a lot of countries, a lot of our governments. Our leaders don't understand what it means to be a leader. And maybe that's because the people don't understand the job of a leader. And so who they elect or choose or are forced to have as a leader is a, once again, mistaken idea of what a leader should be.
which leader is it that is I mean in, in any situation leader follower situation which leader is it that gets the strongest followers is the the one who sits on his throne and barks out orders in his protected castle or is it the king that fights beside his soldiers on the battlefield putting everything he has life and country kingdom on the line This is what the wolf spirit is asking you. How deep are you willing to go for family? And who is the leader? Your pack. And if you have been chosen to be the leader of the pack, was that something you chose? Or was that something that was placed upon you? It's about obligation. Family is very, very much about obligations and understanding them and prioritizing them. Yeah, major obstacle. Family can be a huge mountain. And you have to figure out how to either go around it, work with it, There really is no blowing it away, going underneath it, or climbing to the top of it. Not in most families, anyway. What's interesting about this Wolf Spirit card that's about family, what we're seeking is harmony, cooperation, and it's healing. When the alpha male and the alpha female have pups, I don't think they're called pups, but when the baby wolves are born, <laughs> the uh, mother wolf needs time in the den to heal and bond and, and feed those puppies that first colostrum milk. So the whole family makes that possible because they know she needs to heal it's a part of being a family it's a part of a harmony it's a part of cooperation and it's a part of healing because there's new members of the pack and the pack order is going to change but not for a while Enjoy the innocence of the newest members of your family. But honor whoever the leader is. Is that you? That's you. Man, oh man, you better honor yourself. Oh. So here I'm hearing we're giving away too much energy. Trying to shine our light or we're giving too much of it out. And what we're getting back in return is disillusionment at the clarity of the things that we thought were truths were not quite so true. So we need to dive into the energy mm. that we are trying to give out. Give some back to ourselves. Retrieve the bits and pieces of us that we need to embrace and have a cup of tea with and feel the feels so that you can let them go because they're like the autumn leaves that fall to the ground. Those are the bits of your disillusioned self. All that is going to do is feed the tree of life. We have Rue with its angelic protection that lasts for eternity. And we have the wolf 
which is all about family. And protecting family and energy of family. It's where you're going to find your protection. Look, when you're coming into hard times or something happens just to you this week, take a look at your, at your, towards your family for support. Whether that's your fa friend, family, or your genetic family, that doesn't matter. It's what you consider family that does. Now, message from spirit, please. And here we get. There we go. I still can't see. Sorry for the reflection. I'm trying to get it so that you can see the word at the bottom in the number. Five card again. And it's forgiveness. By day and by night and by every cycle. No matter what the conflict, change, or instability is. We are being asked to forgive. You will find peace and harmony and stability and alleviate your fears through forgiveness. Forgiveness is going to help you heal that embrace. Forgiveness will help you let go of the bits and pieces of you that you disown now that are no longer you because you forgive yourself. Forgiveness helps you understand who your family truly is. By day and by night you get great clarity and huge energy by knowing that connecting to your root self, your core, doing the energy work, taking your time, not getting in a rush, and protecting what is important to you, that you will make it through this month. Forgiveness is paramount to manifestation. It's paramount to moving on with your life. It's been said that forgiveness is the greatest gift we can give ourselves. Forgiveness of others, but also forgiveness of self. We are the most critical and judgmental of ourselves. The inner critic does so much more harm than, criti than criticism that comes from others. Forgive yourself for trusting others and getting hurt, for not knowing, for not seeing, for not believing. You are human. You are growing and learning. Human perfection is rooted in imperfection. Let me say that again. Human perfection is rooted in imperfection. This card indicates the need for forgiveness in the situation. Ask for that. Well, what we're asking about is how to forgive ourselves what do we need to know for the week so in this particular situation we need to be forgiving of ourselves this week I mean yeah forgiving of others but I think we're really real we are I know I am super hard on me forgive yourself be kind to yourself 
you need to be your own best friend because you know what? You're the only you're the only thing you really and truly have to count on in this physical world. Because you're the creator of it. By day and by night. My goodness. Wow. Give us an affirmation, please. And a message. Oh, I love these two branch messages. One is flexibility and the other is forgiveness. Gently flow through the turbulence. Life has the ability to shape you. Bend, don't break. Wow. Gently flow through the turbulence. Life has the ability to shape you. Bend. Don't break. And don't be afraid of the flow. There's an affirmation that goes with that. I love that card. It's interesting. I got a water card in the deal. <laughs> Today when the storms of life come through blowing, I will bend with them, not break. I will be brave and let go of the shore with courage. I will not be caught up with the things I cannot change, but focus on what I can and flow. I will swim in the great sea of life and not be afraid because the winds of positive change are on my side. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you. So, to recharge the energy that we're giving away so freely, we have to understand that there's, we have to do work to recharge that energy, replace what we send out, um, and to understand that as that happens and we transform and change, we need to take time out for contemplation and to embrace the release of the past and the bits of ourself that no longer serve us so we can let it fall to the ground to feed our roots. This can only happen if we protect what is important to us by connecting with heavenly bodies, um, whichever you prefer, whether it's angels, whatever. This is not about religion here. <laughs> uh, knowing that your strength comes from protection sent through us to the angels because of our disowned self, those pieces that we're letting go of, we need the rue for protection to help us grow. And in the meantime, understand that as we're forgiving ourselves, we are being protected and guided by family. Know your position in your family. Where do you fit in in your community? It's something that you can volunteer to do in your community. It helps the path. This can only come about by being forgiving and flexible, but not so flexible to the point where you're going to snap and break. Be the willow and the poplar tree, not the oak. Although the oak 
can withstand so much it's strong and it bends when it's young but as it gets older bending is not as easy what do we need to know from the animals <laughs> i love it little meerkat hey hey you matter thanks for existing I'm going to leave on that note. You guys, once again, thank you for being here with me. If you're new to the channel, I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you think you know someone else who might like it, share it if you'd like. Um, if you think you want more, subscribe. And hit that bell that says all beside it so that you'll get notifications when I post a new video. I do this every Saturday. And so we'll see you next time. Please, everyone. Be kind to one another. Most of all, be kind to yourself. Let's make kindness a habit, please. Don't be in such a hurry. And think about how you say things before you say them. I love you. And we'll see you next time. Thanks now. Bye-bye.